Hello. Welcome to Nanny Tumbles Storytime. Today I am going to read a story about a young girl called Scylla. Scylla is nine years old and she is in year four at her local primary school. She's got a few issues going on, but hopefully when you hear the story, you will hear some of the ways that Scylla manages to work through those issues. Okay, sitting cosily, I have got a fab cushion. Can you see? You see it's an instrument being played by a man. Huge hands, but a very delicate instrument. But somebody very special made that for me. But let's get cosy with your cushions and let's listen to Scylla's Grumpy Day. Now you'll have to forgive me because I'm going to read the story from the pages. So I won't always be looking you in the eye. Let's begin. Scylla's Grumpy Day, Chapter 1. Relief flooded over Scylla. Nanny Tumble was there on the playground waiting for her. Neither Scylla nor Nanny Tumble waved. But the huge smile on Nanny Tumble's face comforted Scylla and raised her spirits. Scylla had had such a wretched day. She wasn't sure she could have stayed in the classroom a minute longer. But despite Scylla's grumpiness, Nanny Tumble's gentle face and soft smile calmed Scylla. Nanny Tumble had stopped waving to Scylla weeks ago. And although they had never discussed why, Scylla was sure that Nanny Tumble sensed that waves and hugs in front of all the other children might embarrass Scylla. She was nine now, after all, and some of the children could be really mean and tease the younger children who still sprinted across the playground to jump into their carer's arms. Scylla knew that it shouldn't really matter what the older children thought and that she should just be herself. After all, Nanny Tumble had always encouraged Scylla to be a decent person and to treat other people the way Scylla would like to be treated. That meant being kind, respectful and caring. But Scylla was beginning to realise just how powerful a few mean children could be and it tied her tummy in knots. She didn't want to change who she was just because she was fearful of being teased. But she didn't feel brave enough yet to do anything about it. So she decided the best thing was just not to worry. Anyway, worrying only gave you wrinkles. For two. Scylla was silent on the walk home from school. She was glad that Nanny Tumble wasn't one of those people who felt compelled to fill silences with monologues of the mundane. Oh, isn't that a cute puppy? Mmm, that lady has nice hair. And the hitter finale question. Did you have a good day, dear? Scylla felt her head was about to explode. So many thoughts swirling round and round like lava waiting to erupt from a volcano. She knew she had to sort things out in her head and no doubt Nanny Tumble would gently grill her over supper. Everything seemed to have gone wrong today from the moment she hung her coat on her peg in the cloakroom she was ambushed by the TikTok club. Bella, Sophie and Meg. Scylla was only permitted to use the computer at home for learning 
and she had no idea what the girls were exclaiming over. They always giggled and played with each other's hair. But the worst thing was that they would stare at Scylla. What are you looking at, pretty Priscilla? Scylla knew that she could speak to one of the adults at school about the girls, but so far she had just smiled. Rather foolishly, she felt, and turned away. They didn't seem to bug her anymore when she did this, and she felt that for now she would just let things lie. Maths had bored Scylla to tears. They were doing long division. And although Nanny Tumble had taught Scylla how to do the bus stop method in year three, the teacher still wanted everyone to chunk. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Until you can't chunk any more because you have nothing left to chunk. But what about remainders? Scylla thought. She knew better than to put her hand up and ask, because although Scylla was in the top group for maths, she knew her teacher would say, Scylla, would you please just use the chunking method? Oops, a daisy, I'm missing a page. Scylla had nearly cried at P.E., she wasn't at all athletic, and she was never picked for the baseball teams, even when her friends were the team captains. Scylla pondered, does competitiveness win over friendship? She had concluded it must, but it still really hurt her feelings. The PE teacher had ended up making Scylla his helper. Maybe he felt sorry for her. But she hadn't worked it out yet. Then, to cap the day off, the teacher had warned her about staring out of the window too much. Scylla found it hard to look at the whiteboard and listen to the teacher all the time. And anyway, who needed to learn about electrical circuitry? Scylla wanted to be a vet and travel to Africa to look after endangered animals. She didn't want to be an electrician. Chapter 3 Scylla and Nanny Tumble sat at the kitchen table. The kitchen was compact but cosy, and there were two additional chairs for visitors. When cooking, Nanny Tumble would laugh out loud and say, it's only a one-bottom kitchen, you know, Scylla. And Scylla had begun to understand that Nanny Tumble meant that only one person could walk around the kitchen. Otherwise, people would bump bottoms. Mmm! -hmm. Sausage, egg and beans. Scylla was in heaven. Her tummy grumbled with satisfaction and warmed up cream rice with a huge dollop of raspberry jam on top to follow. Scylla was aware from the way Nanny Tumble was trying to discreetly scrutinise Scylla's face that Nanny Tumble was building up to the hitter question. Scylla felt terribly guilty for being grumpy and she knew that she should apologise and explain what was on her mind. Okay, thought Scylla, be mature and express your feelings as best you can. Nanny Tumble smiled, but there was anticipation in her sparkly eyes that crinkled ever so at the edges. She knew that Scylla was building up to the big reveal, so she waited patiently. I'm sorry, Nanny, for being grumpy this evening. That was it. Once she'd spoken those crucial words, Scylla launched into her account of all the challenges she had faced that day 
just like a rocket, soaring into space with its engines flaming, dispersing pollution across the universe. Nanny Tumble listened attentively and without interruption. Scylla had managed not to cry, although it would not have mattered if she had. Everyone needs a good cry. After the words had come tumbling out, rather like a landslide, Scylla felt rather exhausted, but oh, so much better. Rather surprisingly, Nanny Tumble, Nanny Tumble, excuse me, clapped her hands and came around the table and hugged Scylla. You brave, clever girl, she said. It takes a lot of gumption, you know, to let it all out. And so eloquently. I'm so proud of you, Scylla. Once you recognise your emotions and understand that and understand what has made you feel the way you feel, only then can you tackle your challenges. Well done, Scylla. Now, how about helping me clear the table and then what about some chunking homework? Nanny Tumble and Scylla roared with laughter. Later that evening, Scylla sat up in bed and unscrewed her Russian dolls. She loved to talk to them and imagine their soothing words. Look up at the sparkling stars, Scylla, and dream, dream, dream. Scylla snuggled into her pillow. Tomorrow was a new day. And so, the end of Scylla's grumpy day, she managed to go to sleep nice and calm and just wishing she would dream and dream all night. So, in Scylla's grumpy day, we didn't describe what Scylla looked like. So maybe you could have a think about drawing Scylla as you imagine she might look. Maybe draw their kitchen table or maybe draw Nanny Tumble. It's up to you, but have a go. And maybe think about some of the difficult things that Scylla had to put up with during the day. We learned how she dealt with them, but how would you have dealt with them? Think about that. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you all soon. Bye for now. <laughs>